Good evening guys, welcome back to the channel, it's your boy Sly Jordy, and welcome back to F123, my team career mode for the season 1 finale at the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. We are currently in P7 in the driver standings, P4 in the constructors, although that can still change. We have P7 set, there is absolutely no way we are going to be losing that um, for this last race, so... Honestly, there's not really any stakes going into this one apart from the constructors. So we do need to keep an eye on McLaren. But yes, if you missed the last few episodes, wow, since the Texas Grand Prix, since Qatar actually, we have been doing so, so well. And that was mainly down to AI engine wear. Now, I'm going to chuck in a little spoiler for this episode. That is not going to be a problem for the drivers in this race. So uh, we're going to actually see where the car is. And it's back to normal essentially. Um, my hypothesis proved correct. But yes, look at our results for Season 1. We have one final race to go. It's been pretty good. We're a newcomer to the grid obviously. I chose that option so we're the worst car on the grid. And hopefully that changes um, going into the second season. But... Uh, Teo Porsche's contract is about to run out and we've already really set it in stone after the Las Vegas Grand Prix uh, There's absolutely no way we're signing him on another one. He just is not good enough for um, Where we are currently so yeah uh, Chucking in some last R&D uh, we've changed the MG UK just for this last race Of course, we didn't really need to change it before we still had a spare one always there uh, ready for this race and uh Unfortunately, yeah, like I said, we are chucking in some of the last R&D, but none of it is coming in for this final race, which is very unfortunate. But these facilities, of course, and the R&D stuff that we do have come in will be out for us in time for the, the initial race of Season 2, which I am really, really excited about. Uh, but yeah, time for the contract renewal. We have some of our last activities, and we're going to do a sponsor event. Um, and yeah, without further ado, let's actually get into this because now it is time for the contract renewal. We're going to be either re negotiating with Teo Porsche or signing a new driver and that is what we are going to do. I think we're going to sign a new driver. So um, yeah, here we are looking at the driver market now. Things are going to be changing. Of course, this... Um, I started this save file before the patch came in to fix the whole contract issue. That's not going to fix at all uh, for Season 1 because obviously we already began the season. So uh, yes, approach accepted. Uh, originally I wanted to try and get the reserve driver in. Um, it won't let you do that. You have to sign, like if you're able to like sign him, you have to sign him. Like It says approach accepted, but I'm not approaching him. I'm never approaching the guy. Um, but essentially what the game does is just continuously rewind time uh, by a day until you make a new signing. So, uh, yeah, absolutely no way. And look, it, it doesn't rewind time, but it keeps putting off the contract renewal. So um, we're going to have to sign a new driver, like 100%. Uh, and I, it's just not going to be poor share, okay? He's just not good enough and he crashed out. He DNFs too much, in my opinion. He crashed out on the last bit. How do you crash out at Las Vegas? I'm not going to lie. Like, that track, there's barely any... Like, I understand crashing into another car, but Teo Porsche didn't do that. He just crashed into the wall. So, like, quite frankly, just not good enough. But I've got my eyes set on our original teammate, the guy we never really wanted to lose in the first place. It just, you know, his demands are that we finish uh, at least 10th into, like... As you can see, look, in vehicle performance position, it moved up to 10th, but it's actually moved down here. So we're actually able to re-sign Felipe Drugovic. I never wanted to lose him in the first place, but we have him back. And for Season 2, hopefully, um, we could progress the car enough to really get a lot out of... Uh, the best out of Felipe Drugovic. But yes, for this last race, Drugovic is back in the team. That is so, so exciting. Um, but yeah, we've done pretty well this season. Uh, and hopefully we should receive quite a lot of money um, for Season 2. So we're going to be able to improve the facilities really well. And in turn, we'll be really able to improve the car a lot. So even though... 
Uh, even if the car doesn't improve enough to really move up much in the order going into Season 2, I think throughout Season 2, we're going to make some big strides purely on the amount of money we're receiving and the and we receive. But um, before we do get into this race, we're going back onto the driver market screen. Teo Porsche is actually remaining in Formula 1. He's actually signed to Aston Martin. Lance Stroll is out. Uh, Aston Martin have had a full clean out because, um, yeah, retirements happen early. And we never got warned of Fernando Alonso retiring, but he has retired. So he's not at Aston Martin anymore. Not someone we have to worry about. Bottas has gone to McLaren. Lando Norris is at Mercedes. Hulkenberg is at Alfa Romeo Salba. Stroll is out. Lance Stroll is out of F1. Liam Lawson will be making his F1 debut um, in our universe at the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. That is crazy, and I'm looking for Alonso. He's gone. He's gone. He's retired before even the last race, which kind of sucks. I was hoping for at least one last battle, but, I mean, look at this. When we were doing that final R&D there, McLaren are, like, right at the top. So look at the vehicle performance comparison. They're, like, at third. It's going to be really interesting going into Season 2, but before we can cast our eyes over to that horizon, we've got to cast our eyes back onto the track at the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, one of my favorite tracks to drive on the F1 game for qualifying. Here we go. And of course, um, I did have a little drive before this, uh, just to chill in cockpit mode, just to, this is the last time you guys are going to be seeing the STR01 around the track. This car, like this livery, this is the last time. I already have everything ready for season two. And already our first lap of Q1 has been compromised by Lewis Hamilton, who's right behind us. Um, we've had to move out the way a little bit, uh, just so we don't really compromise him. Um, and in turn, we've compromised ourselves. But of course, it's only the first lap of Q1. I'm not going to be too worried about it, as we now um, stay ahead of him, of course, for now. But that's mainly down to how much ERS we're using, and then of course, you get DRS as well. In a normal race environment, Hamilton would have overtook us long ago. And yeah, it's real interesting. It's going to be Verstappen versus Leclerc going into this last race. But Verstappen has a pretty big lead in the championship. Um, so much so that Leclerc is going to have to hope Verstappen has a really, really bad race. I.e. doesn't score points to be able to stand a chance in winning. So even if Leclerc just uh, does win the whole race and Verstappen finishes somewhere like 7th, like, um, it's just, Verstappen will still be crowned champion. So, um, yeah, definitely very interesting there, but just like real life, Verstappen's going to be the champ. And, of course, we set our first lap of Q1, and now setting our second lap here, a little bit of an improvement by a few tenths, and we actually are P12. So, uh, yeah, Alpine are also really improving, and everyone, look, the, the grid is getting so much more tight-knit, especially at the top in the points uh, paying positions so um, yeah uh, there's only so much we can really up our game we may have gotten really lucky down to AI engine wear for the last few races but everyone's is seemingly back to normal now and our car does not look the best around here Djokovic on his return to the grid is the slowest guy on the grid which does suck but it's something that like we were kind of expecting in season one we were always hoping eventually that you know we'd find the time to improve the car enough to be able to push our second driver towards the points at the very least and that's what I hope to do and that's what I aim to do for season two uh, but yeah we crossed the line with a 124.8 our slowest time of the day for qualifying on our first lap of Q2 but that is mainly because we were using a scrub set of tires as I usually do tires that we've already used uh, and now on these fresh softs we're gonna see if we can actually uh, get into Q2 Verstappen is in P11 for qualifying. Was that his final lap? Uh, if like <laughs> if it was, then Leclerc's got to be a really happy man going into the main race. Teo Porsche is actually P12, so not too bad for him. Like he's in a pretty good car. I think he's on the fourth fastest car on the grid. So Porsche's actually really like pulled the wool over our eyes here. Like um, I don't understand how he's got in that Aston Martin seat, considering he was really mediocre by even our standards, but. He's in the Aston Martin seat. He looks all right, but I don't think he's going to be much better than Stroll, to be quite honest, as we now cross the line with a 123.9, I think that was, in P6. So, 
better than our common position of P7. So we've made it to Q3 um, ahead of Porsche, of course, but he is getting closer to us. He is in a faster car, but we are more skilled, of course. And yeah, we see the Alpines. Both Alpines are now in this top 10. Both McLarens are obviously here as well. Um, yeah, definitely getting a bit more competitive in this top 10. Uh, with Piastri obviously improving enough to get into Q3 quite regularly now and of course the Alpines they've really made some strides towards the end of this season of course for the first half of the season they were really mediocre they were one of the worst teams on the grid along with uh, Williams for example Alfa Romeo had a few bright spots here and there mainly with Bottas but Bottas isn't on Alfa Romeo anymore so I'm, I'm quite uh, intrigued to see how Alfa Romeo do now, but now that they don't have their star man for this season, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be our one and only lap of Q3 as we go through this little chicane here. A little outside the track, uh, if we ever put the corner stringency on a, you know, strict, that would have been a lap invalidated. So uh, definitely got to be a bit careful there. Of course, um, might even turn that option on at some point very soon. But yeah. Our time is looking okay, but I just, I don't feel as confident as I have in the last few races now. Of course, I've been a little hesitant, but, uh, in previous races, but by the time we get into Q3, I'm already feeling, like, really good about the car because of how high we're placing it. But with Abu Dhabi, it's back to normal how it was for the majority of the season. We are getting into the points for most of these races, which is an amazing thing, but it's lower, lower in the points, closer to P10. And let's see what we get with that lap. A P7. It's getting a bit annoying to see 7th place so often as we have this season. But honestly, considering the strides that other teams like Alpine have made, we're still outscoring Alpine. We're ahead of Piastri, but Bottas starts in 2nd. Uh, so a very good debut qualifying for Bottas in the McLaren. Quite weird to see Bottas in that McLaren seat. I'm pretty sure I've seen a couple of other people's career modes where Bottas has done the same thing. Um, but yeah, pretty good all things considered, but look at how close that is. The gap is 19 points, so really, Verstappen's going to want to place rather high, maybe in like uh, the top six, perhaps, to, uh, you know, make sure he wraps up the championship convincingly. And as we do our final upgrade for this season, it's time to go to the so grid. Ready to go racing for one final time this year. Another season of victories, controversies, and rivalries lies in our wake. And just one challenge remains here in the United Arab Emirates on a circuit that made its spectacular debut back in 2009. Welcome to the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. The Yas Marina circuit is made up of 3.28 miles of track, featuring 16 corners with two very long straights. DRS zones going into the heavy braking zones of both Turn 5 and Turn 7 offer plenty of potential for overtaking. The circuit comes with its fair share of tricky corners, which will certainly test a driver's braking management. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. It's Carlos Sainz in pole position and Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Leclerc, Hamilton, Perez, the owner driver, Gasly, Norris, Oscar Piastri, Ocon, Russell, Verstappen, Theo Porcher, Joe, Albon, Hulkenberg, Magnussen, Sonoda, Liam Lawson, De Vries, Drogovic and Logan Sargent. With preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. Anthony Davidson, a lot of talented drivers out on the track today, but what will stand out for you? My focus is 100% on the front of the grid. Like you said, we're seeing a lot of strong competition across those positions, so it'll be super interesting to see the fight for that front spot. Personally speaking, I'm hoping for plenty of overtakes. Right, mate, it's the final race of the season. There's nothing to lose here, so go out there and enjoy it. Well, it's quite an intriguing start to the Grand Prix and the end of the season. Lando Norris takes a penalty, so we move up to P6. We're going to go mediums to hard here. 
um, I think. We only lose a little bit of race time from pitting a little earlier, so I think that will be a pretty good decision for us. Max Verstappen got knocked out in Q2, so now's as good a time as any for Charles Leclerc to win the championship. And, of course, he starts up a little higher due to uh, Lando Norris's penalty. Carlos Sainz starts first as the red lights, they all go out. The five red lights have gone, and we make a pretty good start. We're actually able to try and slot ourselves into second, and we actually block off Leclerc a little bit, which gives Sainz a lot more room out in front, almost a second ahead now as Valtteri Bottas goes, uh, slips behind us here. I decided to skip the formation lap just for this episode. We just want to get right into the race. So here we are, we've got Valtteri Bottas to contend with here as we go on to the main straight. Uh, Carlos Sainz is already over a second ahead and he is pulling away. And now Bo uh, Valtteri Bottas actually overtakes us here. No DRS needed, he's just a more powerful car. We are obviously going to be at a disadvantage now, just as we usually were um, earlier on in the season. And uh, yeah... Valtteri Bottas, he went over the curve a little bit there, so he's slow coming out of that corner, and we are now going to try and retake second place. He's just a little faster than us, but we might just have the better traction. As we go around the outside, we actually get to the racing line as well, and we are just about getting in front of Valtteri Bottas. But for how long, though? We don't know. But Carlos Sainz is, um, yeah, he's well out in front. This is the best start he could have hoped for. Um... And honestly, quite strange how he's doing really good in my game now, seeing as though in real life he's been doing amazing as well. Um, yeah, Carlos Sainz has had a pretty good um, last couple of races, hasn't he, in real life? And it seems to be replicated here in the game as he just keeps stretching out his lead. And we're now going to skip to lap three. Carlos Sainz is three seconds ahead and Charles Leclerc has overtaken Bottas and he now overtakes us. So it's a 1-2 for Ferrari. We're going to try and get down the inside. A pretty late dive. Honestly, a little dirty there as we make some c contact with Leclerc. Uh, but Leclerc, obviously, he doesn't get the best exit that he could. And we're going to try and have a similar overtake um, to the one we did on Bottas. Of course, the Ferrari has a lot more power than even the McLaren does just a little bit. Uh, and we're going to still try and go around the outside of Leclerc. We're still jockeying for position here, but I think Leclerc's got to the racing line and we have to yield. There was absolutely no way that was going to end well if uh, we really did try to um, take P2. So I think Leclerc has 100% taken this. And Sainz, because of all this battling, is almost five seconds ahead. So uh, he might even win this whole race just because of that. But Leclerc, P2, that's his best spot, his best chance of winning the championship. As we now skip to lap six, onto the main straight, Sergio Checo Perez is now overtaken us and um yeah we're gonna try and get into his slipstream i really don't want to lose much time especially considering that we are almost two seconds ahead of lando norris in the mercedes of course we've already beaten lando norris in the standings it's more of a pride thing now and there's no way i want lando norris to have the last lap even though he is in different team colors now and we're still we're actually getting enough speed in that section to actually still fight with the best here and Sergio Perez definitely gets a little dirty there pushes us wide in real life that would have uh, been an illegal uh, move and uh, I actually wanted to to try and return the favor a little bit be a bit more aggressive but he just gained so much time that even though I did try to have a little dive bomb he was just too far ahead and we're now going to skip to lap nine it is now the seven time Formula One champion Lewis Hamilton um, now having a go at us, and uh, Piastri is now getting into the mix as well. Uh, Verstappen seems to be making gains not too far behind us. I think he's actually behind Piastri, so uh, Verstappen is definitely having a good go of it, of course, as now Hamilton and Piastri are actually fighting. Piastri makes the overtake. It's a pretty nice overtake. He came from nowhere, to be quite honest, and that actually gains us about a second as we go into our pit. So uh, a pretty good stint considering where the car is of course um and we started in p6 we pit at uh p4 so honestly a very successful stint right there as we now come into box for hards we are halfway through the race let's see what the pace is for these hard tires of course Drogovic he's not doing too well he is ahead of Logan Sargent though and I think that'll be down to his overall boosts and 
that's going to get even better with time as we improve our facilities. So, uh, yeah, we'll definitely put a lot of the money that we get at the beginning of Season 2 towards the facilities. So, uh, yeah, very much looking forward to see how far we can push Drogovic and, of course, um, eventually how far we can push the car as we now come out of the pits. Hamilton is behind us, not far away, just half a second. He's going to gain a lot here with DRS and Verstappen is there as well. And... Um, if we keep holding up Hamilton, Verstappen's going to get there as well. Lando Norris is really not that far off of Verstappen. So um, between us four, it's going to be, it's going to be a pretty close battle um, for this position. So, yeah. And I'm quite uh, surprised that certain people pitted before us. I think Hamilton was on the hard. So, uh, yeah, he's just pitted at the same time as the medium guy. So he's going to have better grip as we now go around this corner here. And uh, Hamilton... Not able to fight us pretty well. We pinched him pretty hard there, to be quite honest. Uh, pretty aggressive defending, uh, if I do say so myself. And that actually pushes him back towards uh, former arch nemesis of his, Max Verstappen. Um, as some other people make some final pit stops. Let's see where we end up um, in terms of our positions, as we're going to be overtaking a lot of people into the pits, including Piastri. Uh, so Noda still hasn't pitted, but we're up to P6, so that might be a virtual P5, it depends who's out in front, quite frankly, uh, so we'll have to see, but we're going to skip over to lap 11 as Lewis Hamilton finally makes an overtake, Verstappen's there, going down our right, Lando Norris shoots down the left, look at how much positions we lost there, it's, it's shades of Las Vegas as we now try and get as much space as possible, Lewis Hamilton almost loses all control, we're making contact with Lando Norris and we're having to go out to the outside, this is not good for us as we now use our ERS, pretty aggressive um, going on the offensive there, I am a bit angry ha at how that corner ended up and Lando Norris breaks really early there, and um, we were looking not to have a massive collision with him. Let's have a replay of that as Oscar Piastri also finds his way through. Hits Lando Norris on the way round, his former teammate. And we've actually ended up, uh, after losing three positions on the main straight, we actually ended up back where we were in P4. So, yeah, but now we are under pressure from the man who capitalized on that situation quite perfectly Oscar Piastri is now shooting past us here on lap 12 we are a second ahead of Lando Norris and Hamilton but that is not going to last long as they will be um, having the DRS of course they are fighting a little bit though so that buys us some more time which is perfect the longer these guys go out on the mediums uh, the more time the more speed we're going to have compared to them towards the end of the race but this is a man we're not going to have said advantage over Oscar Piastri on the hards we've made a pretty good overtake on Oscar Piastri we managed to retake P4 but for how long it's not going to be long especially considering eventually Piastri is going to get wise to our um, techniques in staying ahead and of course on the next lap onto the straight again Oscar Piastri makes the overtake probably using some ERS as well to try and stay ahead and here's the best thing about this for us we're still gonna get DRS here so uh, it's pretty good Sergio Perez isn't too far in front maybe there's a chance if, I'll, if me and Oscar Piastri um, work together maybe there's a chance we could both actually catch up to Perez because he doesn't have DRS but I clearly don't have that idea as we dive down the inside of Piastri very aggressively uh, making a bit of contact as well as we retake P4. Lewis Hamilton is also back in the exchange. Verstappen's not too far behind in P7. I think at some point he'll be able to catch up as well with all this fighting. We are holding up the grid a bit at the moment um, with our aggressive defending, but we don't care as long as we keep this position where we're at. And obviously, going on to the next lap, it's deja vu. Oscar Piastri's looking to overtake us again, but... Uh, he hesitates this time as now Lewis Hamilton is going down the inside. He's going to stick his nose in a little bit and we're going to try and give him as much room as possible and that ends up with us going over the curb and um, marking some damage to our underbody, unfortunately. Um, but we're able to keep P4. There's six laps left to go. It's minor, minor damage. So uh, maybe it will not affect us, at least for the rest of this race. Of course, the more we drive, the more it will affect us. As Lewis Hamilton on the next lap, on lap 16... Uh, tries to dive down the inside uh, to get the position back here but 
Uh, yeah, we're going to try and compete as much as possible as it's three wide. And a look at the speed of Oscar Piastri. Uh, we got DRS. Hamilton didn't. Uh, but that is the difference in the power. Um, the, oh, wow. And Piastri actually makes a similar to, a mistake as teammate Bottas did earlier on in the race. Um, as uh, he went over the curb, he loses a lot of speed. We're going to get DRS. Piastri, of course, isn't. And we're going to make the overtake round the outside. We're going to get to the racing line first. And obviously, we regain P4. But on to the next lap. Once again, Oscar Piastri is able to uh, make the overtake here. And Verstappen getting a little desperate here. He's really wanting to get as high a position um, as he can to try and make sure he clinches the championship here. It's been down to the, it's been taken down to the wire. Uh, but as long as Verstappen scores some decent points, he will win the championship. Of course, we're wanting to keep as high a position as possible, so we are unfortunately going to be fighting him. Uh, and he's obviously going to be fighting us, which is really not unfamiliar. We've fought Verstappen a lot more times than we really ought to have um, throughout this season. And honestly, more than anybody else on the grid, it's quite strange considering Verstappen is the championship leader. Uh, but we now skip ahead to lap 19. Lewis Hamilton does overtake us, but it was right before the DRS zone. Uh, well, right, yeah, right before it. So we were actually able to get some DRS as now Verstappen makes the double overtake. He gets up into P5. We're not going to fight him too much, but we are going to get some DRS here. I think he might be using ERS as well, but... Uh, our objective is to try and stay as close to Verstappen as possible. Shades of the Brazilian GP here, although we aren't fighting for the win. We are still going to be DRS uh, training behind Verstappen. We want to keep that DRS as much as possible, but he's using ERS. He wants to get out of here. He wants to get as far away from us as possible as we now go into the final few corners of lap 19. Looking to go to the final lap um, Defending as much as possible from Hamilton, but Bottas is there in P8. He's crept up into this fight on the hard tyres. That pace is finally coming true as we now go on to the final lap. This is it. Can we keep P6? Where are we going to end up here? We're going to be fighting Lewis Hamilton and Valtteri Bottas, two former teammates. This could be massive. Lap 20, the final lap of season one as Lewis Hamilton looks to go around the outside and he overtakes us right on the DRS detection line that is a huge mistake from the seven time world champion as we actually managed to get DRS Hamilton is going to be losing so much speed on this straight and through goes Valtteri Bottas um, as we now struggle to keep the position we're going to try and give him as much space as possible without going over too much curb we're here, but unfortunately now we are at the disadvantage. We're not going to be able to um, get the extra speed. As now Valtteri Bottas, he's going to go down the inside. He's actually getting so much speed on us as we run out of ERS that he is going to be able to take this racing line perfectly. We've lost the position to Bottas and therefore cementing our fate of losing P4 in the Constructors to McLaren. And we might even lose P7 to Hamilton, but he locks up. He locks up as we almost crash right into him we make a little bit of contact but we manage to maneuver the car around the outside we're ahead of lewis hamilton and as annoying as it will be to see this number in our positions once again p7 is not bad at all as we now cross the line to mark the ending of season right, one a pretty good race a pretty hectic final lap and unfortunately we do lose the Constructors battle with McLaren. We lost P4. P5 is still going to be amazing from our standards. But yeah, there it is. The end of Season 1. Another entry added to that prestigious list of the sport's most incredible drivers. Victory today then, but bittersweet emotions, I'm sure, as the championship slips through their fingers. Even so, what a fantastic final race of the season this was. What do you think it was today, Ant, that gave them the edge over the competition? I feel like consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick, and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalise on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field.
Here come our winners now, a thrilling race and a tremendous effort by Ferrari. Their history is well known, so it's no surprise to fans the world over to see them come out on top once again. Well, despite a very respectable P2 finish for Charles Leclerc, he did try his best, but he is unable to best Max Verstappen. Verstappen, of course, was able to get a high enough position to be able to clinch the championship. Carlos Sainz wins the last race of the season. Sergio Perez is finishing on the podium again. Once again, Red Bull win the Constructors' Championship. And, uh, yeah, honestly, a really, really good race from all angles as we now look to the final leaderboard of season one of our career mode pretty pretty good alpine also scored double points and this is it we managed to finish p7 there was a chance to get p6 we were close enough on points with signs after our last few races but signs was just on it from the get-go uh, for this race and he made sure to keep p6 with a very commanding win I didn't really see much of George Russell in that Aston Martin, to be quite honest with you, now that I look at it. Uh, but yeah, we lost the position by just a few points to McLaren. If we'd have finished ahead of Bottas, I'm pretty sure we may have actually won that Constructors battle. But P5 is so, so good by our standards. Um, and we beat an Aston Martin, that was another one of our competitors, because Lance Stroll just was not good enough, and neither is Teo Porsche. But guys, that marks the ending of our Season 1 finale, the ending of Season 1. Um, yeah, <laughs> a pretty good season. That was my first ever season uh, doing this F1 content, and of course... Um, we're going into my first season two ever on my team. I played career mode on F1 2019 and F1 2020 earlier on this year when I first got into the F1 game, but I've never once done a season two. So this is going to be completely new for me going into it. And uh, I'm excited. I'm really, really, really excited. The regulations are going to take effect. We're going to see where we are in terms of the standings. And if it is as close as it was for season one, we still stand a pretty good chance of placing at least the lower points sections um, at the beginning of the season. But of course, with more money comes better facilities, comes a better car. So I'm very, very excited to see how season two progresses, um, even if we are still near the bottom of the grid on the R&D chart for season one. But yeah, to wrap everything up, guys, I want to thank you so much for the support for the viewers that I've received throughout the entirety of this first season, especially over the last few episodes. Like, there's been so many views um, towards the end of the season. I'm so happy about it, and I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode, this finale, of course, and I hope you guys stick around for season two. There's still a few seasons left in me, of course. Now that the summer has finally finished, I can actually do episodes a lot more frequently than I could then. Of course, it really really slowed down because I was just so busy uh, but that's not the case now and we're going full steam ahead into season two I've actually now got a PlayStation 5 as well so I'll have to get that situated a little bit I've already began working on the season two episode so I'll get that out later on this week uh, but in terms of episode two for season two that might take a little longer but hell maybe I'll stretch it out but um, yeah when we get season two up and running, when P when the PS5 is like completely ready and everything, then um, yeah, it's full steam ahead on the my team content from there. But guys, again, thank you all so much for watching this episode, and in fact, the whole series of F123 my team career mode so far. I'm really looking forward to season two, and uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing you guys there too. Cheers for watching guys, if you liked it be sure to hit that like button as hard as you possibly can, comment, share and subscribe and I will see you all next time for some more F123. Cheers, I'll see you soon. Peace!